So, how you folks out there doing? Testing. How you folks out there doing? So, over the last few hours, uh, I've been trying to uh, film, produce, and edit. I also try to uh, burn a bootleg DVD so I can watch it in my house and uh, yeah, not in the bootleg theater. And I've been watching Occupy the Saga. Occupy the Occupy these movements I mean, you get at mad and outraged because of what's going on. You see that protests, commands change around the world. And you rally to protest, but you have no agenda. There is a built-in sense of confusion in the Occupy movement. You need to occupy the ballads, occupy the polling place. Don't vote for a millionaire. You rallied 65 to 70 percent of the country. And you will lose this momentum from city to city, from town to town, to be rebels without a cause for a brief moment in time to say you were part of a movement that got nothing movement. To flex your power and to recognize the power in which you have is one thing. To utilize your power in a positive manner as a immovable strong powerful force anyone can camp out in the park with a sign the key is to change the way people vote the key is to put laws in the books that benefit the people the key is to use this power in which you have now to create a better future for everyone's tomorrow the key is to use this power to remove the millionaires from office but instead you want to go camping To create an autonomous uh, society without bonds and shields is one thing. To want to create a society that takes care of itself, a self-sustaining society on a global scale is bigger than camping. I understand the significance of making a stand, a standing your ground. Drawing attention to yourselves and being noticed. So they decide to occupy Wall Street. Well, you're not occupying Wall Street when they can ring the bell. You're not occupying Wall Street when you can't shut down the exchange. You are not occupying Wall Street if you're not changing the way the levels move up and down on the scale throughout the market. You're not making any dent in the market how can you occupy Wall Street if you're not disrupting the market you 
You have people occupying cities and towns and parks for many reasons. We are the 99%. You got somebody copywriting these phrases. We're not the 99%. We're actually the 95%. The top 5% don't have to worry. When you claim the 99, then you put a group of people in that group who are still above you. So it's actually the top 5% that control. The top 1% have the most power. And the 95 percent of Americans struggle and a large percent of the 95 say the 65 down are in real bad shape and that last percentage Leftover is the middle class. So, occupy the polls come election day. Don't vote for a millionaire. Find things that better your community now. Vote on measures that can help you and not the corporations now vote against anything that has a anything to do with a handout on helping the corporations now see Bob and Dad the Jimmy Combs group True Flesh 1973 so folks want to know how I make my money what I'll do is take this right here this came out of a Roland VS 880 I believe what I'll do is erase all the music on this disc. It'll be lost forever. And once I erase the music, I'll put my own music on it, my own samples on it, and I sell these discs for twenty-five dollars a piece. The key is these discs are not easy to come by. I'm a seller and I refurbish. The one thing that really hurts is the fact that when I can't find these discs, I have to go buy them off the internet. And I bought 70 of these discs. And these discs belong to a group. When you're a musician or an artist, you tend to not want to destroy music or anything music related artistically related so I learned searched I searched to try to find the artists for a lot of these uh, discs and um, I couldn't find the artists It's because before I erase all the information on these discs, I wanted to find out if I can find the people who did this music so I can save this music. I got down to the last disc that I had and I had to break down and erase and start erasing the 60. And um, 
It's kind of hard. It hurts. To know that you find these original music discs that come out of somebody's music equipment and you have to erase it to either do my own music, which is why I bought these, um, or to make money to sell the sample discs that I make. So it's kind of sad that I have to sit here and destroy somebody else's hard work, somebody else's uh, vision, somebody else's dream, somebody else's music, just so I can have a blank disc. I never got to hear Stella Lipsy. I never got to hear... Shit. Alonzo Brown and Danny Schnorter. Never got to hear these guys. Never got to hear Bob and Danny and the Jimmy Combs group. Never got to hear them. Because this is music that was probably never produced, and if it was produced, I can't find them. I can't find these artists. So, that was the video. Lines down. I talked about the protest, the Occupy protest. And I talked about the destruction of a birth. When you destroy music, music uh, is, is, is like burning a book. So if you don't understand why that would hurt somebody to destroy somebody else's music that they'd never heard or they can't hear, or you can't even, I don't even know if it's still on the discs. But. Nobody wants to destroy any music. If you have any uh, musical talents at all, you don't do that. But I have to. Because I bought 60 discs for $40. I make $20 a disc. I got to erase it. I got to eat. So I have to make some copies, and once these 60 copies are gone, I gotta go find some more discs. So on and so forth. The list goes on again and again. But things never change. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive. I understand to go out and protest for what you believe is one thing, but to really believe what you're protesting for is another. A lot of people can say a lot of things, but that don't mean they're true. Stay within your realm. Do what you got to do. Be safe. And be respectful. Yeah.